All right, so here we are with our pairs of Engels notes for geometry. So our objectives today are to identify adjacent, vertical, complementary, and supplementary angles. So these are all pairs of angles that could happen. And then potentially use algebra to find the measures of the pairs of the angles. All right. So, taking a look at our first definitions here, and again, you can write down uh, what is important here, um, or I suppose you could copy the whole thing. But the idea is, is that you are able to interpret what you see in order to make it more applicative. So, um, adjacent angles are two angles in the same plane with a common vertex. So that is very helpful because later on we'll talk about certain um, angles and they won't have a common vertex, and so that's kind of one of those main ideas. They also share a common side. Okay, so um, in this case that's this piece right here. Uh, and again, if they don't have a common vertex, they definitely can't have a common side, and so we don't have adjacent angles. Um, of course, adjacent comes from uh, the, the word that you could use saying something is adjacent to another, so next to. So anytime that you see adjacent, uh, you can go ahead and think we're talking about things that are next to. Uh, usually when I come across things, especially in math, is that I usually just interpret them for what the word is that I know. Um, so again, when I read this, I don't think adjacent angles, I think next to angles. Um, so anyway, just fill in the blanks there. Um, and no common int uh, if you read the um, other piece, uh, there are no other points in here that somehow the ray uh, would go through. So no other common interior points. Uh, in this image, we see angle 1 and 2 are adjacent angles, because again, vertex and side that they share. So again, uh, if I was going to go ahead and uh, take the notes here, I'd have written just the words adjacent angles. I would have written common vertex, common side. I probably would have written next to as my adjacent, and then definitely the image. I am a very visual person, so this is uh, going to help me. All right, the next piece is a linear pair. Um, and so again, a linear pair means a pair on a line, okay? And so a linear pair of angles is a pair of adjacent angles, so we just talked about that in the previous one, whose non-common side, so again, this one is the common one, which is what we were talking about in the previous example, but the non-common sides are over here. And so they're saying that those non-common sides are opposite rays, um, or we could say a line. All right, so again, what I would do is draw the image, most definitely, uh, and then name that it's a linear pair, and it comes from the word line. And again, their non-common sides are opposite rays. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and kind of circle that. These are the non-common sides. All right. Uh, the next piece that we're going to use is something called complementary and supplementary angles. So when it comes to uh, angles, hopefully you've realized that the numbers 90 are uh, important. Uh, we also have 180 that's going to be important and also 360 that are important. So are, those are all degrees that are kind of important uh, milestones in degree measures. And so if we look at complementary angles, it turns out that they have a sum of 90, which means they would add to 90. Okay, uh, so again, complementary angles add to 90. And then we have the other piece, which are supplementary angles, which add to 180. So you do have to kind of think of ways that you can figure out which one is which, because what happens is you're going to end up hearing the complement of this angle is 27 or something. And so you're going to either have to think, is it 90 minus 27 or 180 minus 27? So again, the idea is, is that you're going to have one of these two numbers kind of in your brain, and then you're going to have to decipher which one is which. So there's a little story uh, that I have that goes along with this. Uh, so if you're familiar with mnemonic devices, that would be this one. Um, oddly enough, with mnemonic devices, the more elaborate and strange they are, it actually is easier to remember. So 
we're just going to go with it. Um, so what happens is, let's say that you are going to your friend's house um, for dinner. Okay. Um, what happens is they probably don't necessarily, or maybe they do, have things at their house that they're serving that you are used to. Okay. Because you're probably used to your own food at your own house. And so when you go to your friend's house, you are going to compliment the chef, whoever in that household that is, um, by at least trying the meal. Okay, and if you don't, that's considered rude. So let's go ahead and try the meal, all right? So compliment the chef. And so let's say you don't like it. Let's say they're feeding you fish and you're really just not that into fish. Um, I even remember having fish at my friend's house once and definitely got a bone and was like, what is happening here? Um, anyway, so compliment the chef. So that one's going to be the lower value because, again, you don't necessarily love the food that they eat, but you aren't going to be rude, so you're going to have that lower amount of the food. But then, of course, uh, especially depending on where you're from, um, supper happens to be a, a key word in Iowa, at least from the people I know. So let's say that you're having supper at home. All right. Um, and I can think of, for instance, having pizza at my house. My husband made pizza the other day. Um, I'm going to eat a lot more. Okay, um, then probably at someone else's house because we actually don't usually have red sauce here. We have um, kind of a white garlic sauce. So I'm going to eat a lot of supper um, at my own house or a lot of whatever it is that I like. And so that's where you're going to get that higher value or 180 degrees. Now, again, you can use whatever mnemonic device or memory tactic you uh, want in order to figure this out. Um, you could even just go with alphabetical order. Complementary is lower in the alphabet, or a, I guess a lower uh, sequential number uh, than S in the alphabet. So you could go that way as well. But I tend to use the alphabet too much, and then I can't remember what I'm doing. Um, so... Complimenting the chef is about 90 degrees of supper, and eating at home is, is 180. Nice, solid dinner. Okay, so anyway, again, you don't have to do that, or you can. Yay. Um, looking at this image just to see what's happening, you'll notice that these don't have to be um, adjacent. All right, so just note that they're not necessarily adjacent. They can be, but you'll see that they don't have the same vertex, potentially. A, B, and C are all the vertices. But A and B, for instance, as it says in the example, are complementary. So we're talking about this 53 plus 37 is going to make 90. But then A and C, so these two over here, if we put them together, they'd make a line or supplementary or 180 degrees. So... All right, uh, the last bit of pairs of angles that we're going to mention are vertical angles. And vertical angles are a little obnoxious um, because they're not always vertical. Sometimes they're horizontal. Hmm. All right, so we're going to write sometimes horizontal. So it's a good thing that if you get confused with vertical and horizontal, it doesn't even matter. It just means basically the angles that are across from each other. So if we take a look at the uh, image here, they're saying that 2 and 4 are vertical angles, so again, across from each other. And then we're also saying that 1 and 3 are vertical angles. So it always has to be kind of formed at this X, um, which is two intersecting lines, or an X. Uh, my five-year-old is learning the alphabet, and he uh, is recognizing X more often. Um, but it's always funny because how many X words do we have? What, X-ray and xylophone? Um, <laughs> so we end up doing things that end with X, like box and fox. Um, anyway, so... X. I always think of him right now with that letter. So those are vertical angles. Again, if you uh, know the difference, uh, technically these blue ones would be horizontal because they're kind of across um, versus vertical, which would be the up and down. But turns out it doesn't matter if you know the difference because it's just the ones that potentially aren't touching each other. 
So again, as I'm taking notes, I would write vertical angles, and then I would write the word across in quotes, because that's technically what they are. I would definitely draw this image, uh, and if I have colors, that's always the easiest rather than just labeling them. And then I'd definitely write formed by two intersecting lines or an X. All right. So hopefully with these notes, and especially if you've uh, kind of summarized them yourself as you're going through, you now know how, how to identify adjacent or next to angles, vertical angles, uh, and then that difference between complementary and supplementary angles. Uh, after that, hopefully the vocab we went through were kind of these definitions, so adjacent, complementary, supplementary, uh, linear, and vertical. So knowing those definitions. We're going to go over a few examples. Uh, the book that we use ends up doing these lesson quizzes. This is not a quiz. It's just like a review. So don't don't freak out. Okay. Whoops. Um, my new stylus pen came today, so I'm uh, at school. I'm not at school right now, but came to school, and I'm very excited to start using it on our next video. So maybe it won't look like I'm using a crayon. I have no idea. All right, so taking a look at these review questions. Well, it's kind of like an assignment, but with me helping out. So uh, the measure of angle A is apparently 64.1 degrees. We don't tend to have decimals in um, our degrees, but hey, this example does. And then the measure of angle B is this interesting expression. So we need to find the measure of each of the following. So how would you find the supplement of A? Well, remember, maybe, that supplement meant supper and the thing that you're going to eat at home. So 180 degrees, but then its supplement would mean that we're going to take 180 and subtract 64.1. So 180 minus 64.1 would be 115.9, unless I can't subtract very well, which may be possible. So I'll grab my calculator. All right, sweet. Um, and so then the next one is your complement. And so remember, the complement then is 90 degrees. So you've got to think of that way that you can remember that. And the complement is B is interesting as well, because it's going to be 90 minus angle B. The problem with angle B, however, is that it's this weird expression. That's okay. That is going to be our answer. 90 minus the expression of 4x minus 30. Now, of course, uh, since we have all had algebra 1, you could go ahead and actually simplify that. And so if you distribute this negative, we'd actually have 90 minus 4x plus 30. So technically, we'd have 120 minus 4x. But it turns out, if you just state it this way, and no simplification, that is perfectly acceptable. And if you do it this way, that is also perfectly acceptable. So uh, the problem with going from one to the other is that sometimes we lose some of those pieces. And so as much as you tried to do the right thing by simplifying, you simplify wrong, and then the answer is wrong when it was originally correct, at least the work. So. Either way, I am ac accepting this as an answer, um, as well as this. All right, so again, just to find the supplement and the complement, you take whatever it is, 180 or 90, and then subtract that measurement, even if it's an expression or a number. All right, so then we're going to determine whether this statement is true or false. And, of course, if it's wrong, we're going to say why it's wrong. So first statement here is if two angles are complementary, so thinking about that for a minute, we've got two angles that make 90 degrees, okay, so like 45 and 45 or 40 and 50, okay, then the measure of each is 90. Hmm. Okay, well that's not possible because if both of them are 90, 90 plus 90 can never be 90. So we're going to say that this is false. And we could, of course, change that to the measure of each is less than 90. So if we insert the phrase, less than, uh, then it would be a true statement. All right. Uh, the last two examples here, 
uses this f measure of angle XYZ is 2X, and the measure of angle PQR is this um, expression here. All right, so let's see, PQR. So notice that none of the letters are the same, so we aren't talking about adjacent angles, so they're not touching at all. Uh, we're just talking about two random angles out on a plane somewhere. Okay, so if these two angles are supplementary, we need to find the measure of each angle. So if they're supplementary, they add to 180. So officially, we're taking 20, oh, sorry, 2x and adding it to the second angle, which would be 8x minus 20. And that is going to equal the supplementary idea of 180. So algebraically, that means that we're going to put our like terms together. So we have 10x's minus 20. If we add a 20 to both sides, we're going to get 10x that equals 200. Divide both sides by 10, and we get an x of 20. Again, that's not the measure of each angle, that's if we plug it back in. So in number 4, if we want the measure of angle x, y, z, we would need to take 2 and multiply it by 20 and get 40. Uh, the measure of angle p, q, r is going to come from 8 times 20 minus 20. <laughs> which I guess is kind of 7 times 20, isn't it? So, uh, apparently 140 degrees. So again, this feels like it's the answer. X is 20, but remember that the question is actually asking find the measure of each angle. So that's where this second part comes up. All right, and then in the last one, they're saying same angles if they're complementary, find the measure of each angle. So if they're going to be complementary, we're going to set up this same equation, uh, but now it's going to be equal to 90 instead of 180 because of the word complementary. All right, so we'll say that they're equal to 90 this time. Same operations. We're going to combine our x's and end up with 10x's minus 20. But of course, now when we add 20, we're going to end up with... 10x equal to 110 instead. Divide by that 10, and we're going to get an x of 11. That's when we're going to plug in that x of 11. So I guess since I'm running out of room, I'll just do it on the next page. So xyz is supposed to be 2x, but we just said that x was 11. So that means that the measure of angle x, y, z is actually 22 degrees. Uh, the next one wants the measure of angle q, I think, p, q, r. And that is supposed to be the measure, what is it, oh, 8x minus 20, uh, there we go, 8x minus 20. And so we're going to do 8 times 11 instead of x minus 20. 8 times 11 is 88. Minus 20 is 68 degrees. And of course if we double check, um, hopefully 22 plus 68 would add to that goal of 90 degrees because that's what we were looking for with complementary. All right, so that is your set of notes on pairs of angles. So hopefully that gets you set up for the assignment for tomorrow.